I clap again, I love clapping. Um, if I ask you about your the three favorite concepts, technologies, philosophies about the future of healthcare, what comes to your mind? Well, it's probably going to be different from yours because I'm the Right. I, what I love that has personally transformed parts of my life is all the trackers that just keep track of things automatically. So I have more information with less effort. I think my first point is very similar to that. I try to summarize this as patients will be the point of care. So whatever they are, they need to get diagnostics and treatments, customized ones. No matter, you know, I can jump into my driverless car in 2019 and not drive to a hospital to get my heart rate and blood pressure checked. That's ridiculous in 2019. So that's why some of the patients need to become the point of care. Number two. I know it's not a real reality yet in any great scale, but the thing that just inspires me, one thing that really changed my life 5.5 years ago, as the child says, as I became a grandfather, and she had nothing wrong with her, but if she had, the possibility, the approaching possibility of genetic repair hmm. to transform that life just fills me with joy. Have you heard about the Chinese twins? Of Who course. Born after being their genome being edited for of course. being locked into HIV? I, I would not call that something that is a product today. Risk benefit ratio. Well, of course. Sure. Well, like that goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve. Are we better off not knowing? Mine is very different now, my second mm. point. My second point is physician empowerment. Mm. But the first big change in digital health was patient empowerment. That's that's what, you know, it started everything around the culture of changes in healthcare. And I, I believe firmly that with patient empowerment must come physician empowerment. Because if they don't enjoy being part of it, then we are doomed. If you, mm. if you, if you don't totally. enjoy why they became physicians, if, they, if you don't let them use technologies to get their skills and, and capabilities augmented, then you know we can't give everything to patients to make them proactive. We also have to help physicians help patients. So for me, it's physician empowerment. Uh, now, one of the things that you discover when you get really get into patient-physician partnership is that the patient starts to care more for how the physician is doing. <laughs> My doctor worked harder than I did when he was in college. You know, and he did extra work and he developed significant skills. I want him to have a good life. And so I'm entirely uh, in favor of that. But my third thing that gives me joy is something, it's not a big dramatic thing, but see, one thing that happens is when we're out here and we start to be allowed to have our own opinions, we start to care about things that might not have occurred to you. Believe it or not, I mentioned when my granddaughter was born. Uh, I learned about this as a Christmas present. My daughter had taken her ultrasound picture and she made a jigsaw puzzle out of it. Wow. So if you can imagine how difficult that was. Well, but then I saw the printout of the digital ultrasound and then she had a video of 4D of seeing the baby moving. Mm -hmm. And I bet that we are going to see in the future, we will see people being able to get a printout of their baby growing in the womb. And I'm just thrilled at that. Maybe no clinical value, but I don't care because you're asking me what Absolutely. I like. Absolutely. Wow, my third point, I thought it should be about one technology, but I just, I, I know, I couldn't do it. So for me, it's meeting science fiction. When I first used wow. a, a mixed reality device and I, and I had, I could dissect a human being without limitations in 3D with a bloody beating heart and I could go around that. I felt like I met science fiction. And it's such an amazing feeling that, that when you meet technology that many, many years ago you thought, you know, maybe it would come alive sometime soon, but then it does. And you feel like, yes, things can get much better. And I want people to experience the, the feeling of meeting science fiction. And I want to see those same things. When my doctor says something is going wrong with my lungs or something's improving, I want to be able to see those same things. My first experience with that was I've always been the kind of guy, I got copies of all my CAT scans, you know, because I had tumors in both lungs. And I got this OSIRIX open source software. I can not just look at the slices, but I can actually do, they call it 3D reconstruction. And I can see my tumors floating in my lungs.
And it's funny, my wife's a veterinarian. She pointed to those slices and the gray areas around the outside. And she said, you know what that is there? I said, what? She said, that's your fat. And believe it or not, seeing the fat on those CAT scan pictures was part of my motivation. When I came to understand more of how my body is put together, wow. I'm really looking forward to that day when we all know as much as we want, but no more about what's inside. I should say that if just one thing becomes real out of the three, but no, I believe that we need to make all these six points real as soon as possible. So keep on bringing this information, this approach to patients and medical professionals to make digital health happen. Well, and that's why you're the medical futurist and I am a patient of the future. The patient of the future. I'm glad you think so. Thank you, Dave. <laughs>